Well, what a performance we've just witnessed from Manchester City. A 6-0 win against Chelsea. Brian, have you ever seen a performance like that from a Premier League team? I can't remember if I have, Nathan. Um, particularly against the team of the quality of Chelsea, who are one of their rivals. Not, not for the league this year, but certainly a team who we would expect to be there and thereabouts. Chelsea going into the game today on 50 points. They'd lost five games previously. Not in great form when you think they were beaten 4 nothing by Bournemouth in the last away game. and won 5 nothing at Huddersfield mm. last week, beaten 2 nothing at Arsenal in the previous away game. So obviously they're a bit brittle in their away performances, but still that was a sensational performance by Manchester City. And you, what you, was you, it? You, you, well, what was it? I was going to say, you wonder who's going to be able to take points off them, but you know somebody will be able to take points off them. And maybe the way to play them is that how Newcastle played in terms of sitting in and playing on the counter-attack and waiting for your couple of chances, as Crystal Palace did when they won 4-3. What was it today? They were just... They got off to a very good start once again. Not a goal in the first minute this time. A goal after three and a half minutes. <coughs> Poor by Chelsea. Um... Marcus Alonso moving inside the weight was left back spot before the free kick was taken and not ensuring that there was someone in the left back position Hazard was kind of half there but wasn't there to stop the pass into Bernardo's feet and uh, Bernardo Silva's feet after that the, the cutback led to Sterling scoring and then the second goal was was, um, was uh, it was just a sensational goal by, by Aguero, having missed an easier one a bit earlier. And after that, the game became even more open. And it was just the brilliance, the individual brilliance and the collective understanding and awareness of where each other are, where the positions, the movement of positions to find space. But Chelsea did make it easy for them. I mean, the Aspilcoeta struggled against Sterling. Aguero got man of the match, probably rightfully so. But Sterling wouldn't have been too far behind him. He was involved of the main the goals his running direct running his speed and pace was causing trouble all the time for Chelsea but for Chelsea's midfield didn't do their job Giorgino didn't do his job Kante did alright got about as well he could but there wasn't an understanding between Barkley uh, Kante and Giorgino of how to deal with, with, with Manchester City's midfield. What they, was their job? If, if, well, the with job, what, how if Sarri set them up, what did he want them to do? I don't know. Specifically, I think he set... Well, I've not been critical in saying that. I think his approach is we should dominate the ball. And uh, he, he wants Giorgino to receive the ball from the back four players into the middle position and then set it up and move it on into Hazard's feet. Get Higuain linking up, but also running in behind the defence. Pedro is a, is, a, is a runner in behind as well and a dribbler with the ball but the problem was that their, their, their midfield three against their three direct opponents uh, De Bruyne Kevin, the, 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 De Bruyne um, Bernard, Gundogan and Fernandino that they didn't match them at all they weren't in, in positions to affect them when they were receiving the ball they were always under pressure and then Aguero was dropping short off the front off the centre forwards receiving the ball into his feet in space behind Giorgino as well so Giorgino didn't really affect anyone off the Chelsea team as, he, as I felt he should but you know when you lose two goals early on then it's a bit of a chase and they were open but but they just weren't able to, it's hard to see what team would deal with them on the form that, that Manchester City were in today but as the fixtures go on you know I, th I think one of the the biggest games of all we when, when Spurs eventually come here because whether Spurs are still in contention at that time or not but if Liverpool you would think will still be in contention and they would be hoping that Spurs might be able to do a job. The record here, 14 wins, one defeat. The goals they've scored, mm. 51 goals. It, 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 it's it's marvellous. Nine times this season now they've scored five or more goals in a game as well. It's it's quite ridiculous what they're doing. And another Sunday, second Sunday in a row, were simply left purring at the brilliance of Sergio Aguero. His first goal today was one of the goals of the season. He's now in 11 hat-tricks in the Premier League, equal with Alan Shearer, seen as the greatest Premier League striker of all. It's very hard to rank players because different eras, different types of strikers. But what Aguero's done over the last couple of seasons, considering there were question marks when Pep Guardiola came in as to whether or not Guardiola really fancied him, if he was his type of striker, what has he done to make himself, it seems, be even better at 30 than he's ever been before? Well, he's made himself into a more effective team player. I mean, uh, Guardiola demands... Um, 
huge effort from the front players in terms of retrieving the ball, in terms of pressurising the opposition, not allowing them to set on the ball. And, and, and Aguero has had to adapt a little bit to that. In the previous eras, uh, you know, he, he before Pep, he didn't have to do that so much. He was allowed to play as a centre-forward, sometimes playing off a big centre-forward, sometimes playing off uh, Eden Zeko when he was here even. But he was allowed to play as a, as a, as a kind of a sniffer, making runs in me. But he's, the demands on him now, I mean, his, part of his role today was to stop Giorgino being the build-up player in midfield. And, you know, there was times in the game he was chasing back after Chelsea's midfield players, harassing them into mistakes. So that's where, where, how his game has changed. But it, it hasn't decreased his effectiveness around the penalty area. If anything, he's probably become a bit harder to mark because when he's chasing back at people, it means when the ball is retrieved, he's obviously in a space. He's not in a natural, normal centre-forward position in between two weak centre-halves. He's picking the ball up outside the edge of the box, releasing it early off into the, the two wide, speedy merchants, and then arriving into the box late, usually with deadly effect. It was Chelsea's biggest ever Premier League defeat. Maurizio Sarri looked, well, understandably so frustrated on the sideline, didn't shake hands with Pep Guardiola at the end of the game, just went straight down the tunnel. It's all falling apart for Chelsea at the moment, though they are still in three competitions. They have the Carabao Cup final to come, they have Manchester United to come in the FA Cup, and they're still in the Europa League. Does that make it more or less likely that they may actually choose to change manager? right now. Do you think a change of manager could give this Chelsea group a bounce for the final three months of the season? Well, the the, 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 the decision makers in the club have backed Sardi in terms of bringing in Higuain because he obviously didn't fancy Morata uh, and he doesn't fancy Giroud either. He doesn't see them as, 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 as um, I suppose, consistent goal scorers and Morata's confidence, confidence had, had drained away over, over this season and uh, they've moved him on. So they backed him in, in getting him and they backed him in taking in Giorgino for huge sum of mm. money from Napoli as well. So it would seem a bit, a bit odd, but, but um, not unlike Chelsea, though, to get rid of a manager when things aren't going well. We've seen it before with other managers. We haven't been slow to get rid of Marino twice and in the past, they, they, well, they wait and it generally for works. the end of the... Yeah, well, it generally works in the next season. Mm. Sometimes they brought in someone like Benitez and Gus Hiddink and they kept things going and they won cup competitions in the latter part of the season. But Hiddink didn't want to stay on in the job. Benitez would have, but the supporters probably didn't didn't fancy Benitez and there was a, there was and the great vibe around yeah. the club at the time so they moved him out Conte talked himself into being sacked anyway so you know they, they have a history but it must be getting a bit hairy for him now with those three successive defeats in the league 2-0, 4-0, 6-0 you know it can't be 8 against <laughs> Bournemouth but they, uh, if are the he, players still playing for him? If he can, I, I would say the players are still playing for him I, I, I don't think he's doing himself any favour by being critical and saying a few I thought he said a couple of silly things about Hazard, and I think in the position where Hazard is, is 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 iffy about whether he's going to stay or not. I think he needs to say positive things about him all the time. I don't think there's, I don't see any sign of um, of what what became obvious in Marino's latter time, days and, and towards the end of Conte's era as well where the players have got fed up with the manager and are thrown in the towel. I don't think that's the case as yet. But he needs results to turn in his favour at the moment or he won't be there next season. Chelsea don't mess about one. Certainly when it comes to the summer, sometimes they wait till the summer, sometimes they don't. So he's under pressure.